Hey everyone, it's uh, Stephen Wagner with StephenWagner.com. Welcome to the first episode of my YouTube vlog. Um, I just decided to create this video to give you a little bit of an update uh, with what I've been working on uh, since it's been since January 12th, since my last video upload. Um, just wanted to make sure that you all know that I wasn't planning on abandoning the video projects. Uh, it's just been uh, busy, I guess you could say. Um, with work, it's been VDI project after VDI project after VDI project, and in my off time, I've been trying to get out and uh, uh, enjoy myself as much as possible, which has been pretty interesting with uh, COVID going on. It's been interesting though, there's quite a few discounts at hotels, so even though travel is somewhat restricted and locked down, it's still possible to do quite a bit of staycations. I was actually fortunate and uh, able to uh, do a couple trips to Banff, Jasper, uh, visited the Fairmont properties out there, beautiful properties. The hotels were quiet, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, towards the end of last year, I was able to visit Kananaskis, and I think a couple months before that, I was out in Panorama for a week or so. Um, all in all, I know that uh, they're kind of recommending against travel, but the thing is that with the hotels being so quiet, as long as you take, take the precautions, uh, it actually works out fairly well. Um, and you know you got to stay sane in order to uh, uh, to keep going during these difficult times. You got to make sure that you take time for yourself, especially if you're busy with work. It's been pretty interesting, uh, as I mentioned, quite a few VDI projects. It seems like every company in the United States right now is implementing VDI. As far as work goes in uh, Canada, things are pretty quiet. It looks like every uh, corporation is still in the process of uh, minimizing their operations and, and actually cutting IT spending, whereas down south of the border, it's it's uh, increasing. So uh, that's been good. But uh, with all that being said, um, now that I'm starting to get a little bit of time to myself, I'm going to be really focusing on getting some more content on the blog. And that's a uh, couple of the things that I wanted to share with you today in the uh, first episode of the the vlog. Uh, just wanted to bring attention to a couple posts. Uh, just recently in the last week or so, I was able to uh, create a couple posts on Zoom for VDI and Microsoft Teams optimization. Make sure you check that out if uh, you run those in your environment and uh, you're struggling or need help or just want to learn a little bit about the technology. I cover, like for example, with Microsoft Teams, how it uses WebRTC. Uh, same thing with Zoom. I talk about the deployment guide and how you have to have the software installed on the VDI VMs, the base images, as well as the uh, plugin on the connecting clients. Also decided to, uh, I I'm not going to say too much because I'm working on a special project, but I did have to deploy an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS VM inside of my VMware Horizon environment. So I decided to create a little bit of a blog post explaining how to deploy Ubuntu VDI VMs. It's really nice. A lot of people, when they think of VDI, they think of running Windows virtual machines only, but uh, no, you can run Linux virtual machines in VDI. And it's great, uh, especially for IT people. Let's say that uh, uh, you don't have VMware Workstation and you need access to a Linux box for whether it's development, testing, troubleshooting, um, network troubleshooting you know you can uh, just log on to your vmware horizon environment and fire open the linux uh, guest vm it's it's super handy uh, a really cool thing that i'm working on and i just got the post done i think about three weeks ago um, some of you might know that about a year ago i decided to build a custom nvme storage server uh, the first version of the project worked fairly well i wasn't too satisfied with it it was a little bit clunky it was a little bit high maintenance and uh, now that I've had some time, um, I've come up with version two of the project. So what I did is I loaded up four Sabrent Rocket NVMe for two terabyte uh, NVMe sticks inside of an IO Crest uh, NVMe PCI Express card and dropped it inside of uh, an HPE ML310E Gen 8 V2. And uh, that's been working out pretty well and pretty cool. Um, I have a 10 gig network adapter in there. I've got uh, TrueNAS installed. I have the uh, storage set up uh, striped and I'm providing it uh, or I'm providing ESXi hosts with uh, with an iSCSI target to connect to. It's, it's pretty sweet. I've actually been able to fully max out the 10 gig NIC. The IOPS are a little bit lower than I had hoped, but I'm hoping that as I get more time to uh, experiment with this project, I can get those IOPS cranked up. 
Uh, one thing that was really cool is that when I originally received those uh, Sabrent Rocket 4 NVMe drives, when I was benchmarking them, individually, I, I could be wrong, but I think they were pumping out something like 225,000 IOPS, which is absolutely insane. I have a feeling that a little bit of the decrease in the uh, IOs per second are uh, associated with the fact that I'm using ZFS because uh, it is a clustered high performance file system that's designed for data resiliency. Um, so I think we're uh, sacrificing some of those IOPS just for uh, to be able to have ZFS. Um, I might come out with uh, version three of the project where I use Linux with uh, MD RAID and uh, set up a striped um, RAID volume just to kind of see what kind of performance benchmarks I can get. But for the time being, I want to stick with TrueNAS just because it's it's literally that simple. It's super easy to deploy. And especially for like a lot of you people out there with home labs, uh, you can get a computer set up. You can purchase one of these IOCrest cards, load it up full of these, uh, sa these Sabre and NVMe drives are freaking amazing. Um, and you can provide storage to your home lab, really high performance storage. It's it's pretty cool. Again, you you I, I'm not too sure if you would want to use this for commercial use because the uh, the NVMe drives don't have PLP power loss protection, um, but uh, definitely for home lab, small business. Um, in my environment, I'm using it for video editing as well as uh, storage for VDI VMs. So technically, if I were to lose uh, one of the, uh, or actually the entire volume, it wouldn't too big of, of a concern. I've got backup set up and uh, there's actual, it's not the base storage for the data that's residing on it. Um, it's more of just a high speed workspace storage area for, uh, for the data I'm working on. Uh, another post I did uh, a while back, I've been I've been designing quite a bit of VDI environments, and a couple times the question has popped up: um, is what do you do if you're running hybrid Azure AD and uh, you have systems on your network that are hybrid Azure AD joined? Which means not only are the workstations joined to your on-prem Active Directory server, but you have Azure AD Connect set up, and you also have them joined to Azure AD. Now. After doing some testing, doing some research and reading, um, I was actually pretty surprised. There's not too much information on the topic. There is some stuff designed for WVD, Windows Virtual Desktops, um, but I just didn't feel like there was enough on uh, VMware Horizon. So I decided to write a post. Um, the simple answer is just don't do it. Uh, there are workarounds, but you know, all you have to do is just exclude the OU, the organizational unit for your instant clones um, from your Azure AD Connect synchronization and just don't let them join. It makes too much of a mess. And as of this point right now in the environments that I've worked at, uh, there were no pros and cons. If you have Azure AD Connect set up and you've got everything syncing and you have single sign-on set up, th there's no real reason or need as of yet. Um, another post that I wanna bring attention to is uh, some time ago, I can't remember the exact date, but Adobe Flash reached its end of life. Now, there are a lot of enterprise environments, small business environments that are running older versions of VMware vSphere, VMware Horizon. Um, there's a whole bunch of other platforms that are based off of Adobe Flash. And so I was tasked with one of my customers to do a big upgrade with vSphere and Horizon. And unfortunately, they were running such old versions that uh, they still used the Flash management interfaces which caused quite a problem. So it took me about a day or two, but I found a, a decent workaround that was somewhat clean and I decided to write a blog post. So if you're in the middle or if you wanted to know how to get Flash going again, make sure you check that blog post out. And um, I think that's pretty much it for today. A uh, few future projects that I want to bring attention to. Um, I have an AMD S7150 X2 MX GPU, actually, that I'm pretty happy to uh, to report that I finally got working. I purchased this card for a steal uh, maybe about eight months ago. And uh, as most of you know, I have uh, VDI is a hobby of mine, especially with 3D acceleration. For me, what I want to do is get the most realistic VDI environment set up uh, to the point where users don't even know that they're using VDI. And uh, now that I have this AMD S71X2 working, I can decommission my old NVIDIA Grid K1 card, uh, which worked great, but it was just too old. And uh, I did a little bit of a hacky setup to get this guy working. Um, I think a lot of you are gonna be pretty shocked at some of the pictures and how I got it going. The one teaser I'll give you is that I used a very lengthy PCI Express ribbon cable. 
this is because I have the server or the card ins installed inside of a 1U HPE DL360P Gen 8. Um, a lot of you that are familiar with HPE servers know that you cannot put that video card in a 1U server. Um, I didn't put it in it. I've got it on it and it's actually working and I'm cooling it properly. So I'm pretty excited to get that post done. And uh, a couple other things that I'm really excited to do is a lot of you know that I've done some posts in the past with uh, Tenzig Zero clients. Um, I have some Tenzig Thin clients coming in shortly here soon. I've got uh, their new flagship high performance device coming in that uh, their 6100 series that powers four displays. Uh, I'm really excited to play with that guy. And then I also have uh, an entry level unit coming in um, that I'm going to be really excited to do some content on that's designed for, uh, um, I don't know if they're targeting this, but I, I see promise for home users. There's a lot of major companies that uh, with work from home, they're deploying VDI. And uh, this specific unit that I've got coming in is designed for, uh, in my opinion, would be designed for a home user. So if you're putting together a, a bundle for your users to, go, to work from home, your uh, WFH work from home bundle, um, this is a unit that you would include inside of it, uh, powers two displays. Um, but uh, really excited to get uh, some content put on that. So anyways, uh, again, episode one of the vlog. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see anything, if you have any comments or feedback, please make sure that uh, you leave a comment. Uh, if you haven't been to check out the Tech Journal, my personal technology blog at stephenwagner.com, make sure you check it out. There's tons of cool content. Um, and feel free to reach out. On my blog, I've got links to connect with me on LinkedIn. You can follow a Facebook page I have set up for the blog. Um, love feedback. I love when people reach out. Uh, I've had people approach me on the street saying that they've read content. So if you ever see me in person, make sure you say hello. It's uh, it's really cool. I actually had no idea that uh, there were as, as many people reading and using my blog uh, as there actually is. So that's, that's pretty cool. But um, other than that, I hope everyone's staying safe with everything going on with COVID. And... Uh, Please make sure that you like and subscribe to the video. Have a great day.